How's it going guys? I just want to make a quick video uh, just talking about uh, knives that I made and the reason I'm, reason I'm making this video is because I get a lot of questions. What do I do with my knives that I make? Uh, if I sell them, what, what's the price that I sell them for? So this will be just kind of quick run through uh, what the prices are for my knives that I made. So the first one is uh, a karambit that, that I made way way back about close to three years ago and <clears throat> this is where it all began um, this is where my YouTube channel began I still have it I'm not gonna sell it because this will remind me where I started uh, so here it is the second knife that I made was uh, Huntsman CSGO knife and uh, it was uh, requested on YouTube because of the first knife that I made, the Karambit, it resembled the CSGO Karambit and I had an idea why not make all the uh, CSGO knives for the CSGO fans so this was the second one that I made I still have it, um, I did not heat treat it because I messed up on a fuller so this side, this side fuller looks pretty good I mean okay but this side I messed up it's pretty big so I never sold it I kept it for myself and <clears throat> it just hangs on the wall just to remind me where I started third knife that I made was the CSGO uh, shadow dagger I never sold it same thing I'm gonna keep it for uh, for my memories it hangs on the wall um, this one is made out of 5160 steel um, Took me 45 minutes to do one side with the file jig, you know, the bevel, and so 45 minutes, 45 minutes, flip it over. At, on this side, I started using the disc grinder, ground it, ground off a lot of it, and then start using a file jig to fine tune it. So this was my third knife. The fourth knife that I made was the CS:GO M9 bayonet, and I traded that one to, with uh, Mr. Barnhart. I tried to sell it at first but didn't have any buyers back then I was not known so I traded it with Mr. Barnhart and he made me uh, the Milwaukee bandsaw little table and a wall mount I have a video that you could see of how it looks like so it was a trade and I back then I, I felt like it was a fair trade so still do uh, so Mr. Barnhart has that uh, knife the next two knives that I made were from uh, S35VN stainless steel. One of them was for my brother, the other one was for my co-worker. Uh, for my brother I just charged him $140 and for j just for the materials that I used and uh, for my co-worker I charged him $250 for the finished knife. Next knife is the Vipera Invader and I sold this knife to a gentleman okay so the co-worker that I sold the uh, gut hook knife he he had a job uh, up in the mountains and the inspector he was a Native American Indian and he was uh, interested in making knives out of uh, stone where they take a uh, I forgot the name of the uh, the stone they use or the glass or something and they chip it out and uh, he was very interested in that type of knife but the co-worker that I sold my gut hook knife to uh, he was a foreman and he talked to this uh, Native American Indian who was the inspector for our job site and told you know they were just talking around and he stated that I make knives so uh, Mr. Wesley uh, got interested and wanted to see what kind of knife it was and I uh, showed it to him and he got interested and um, he wanted to buy it from me so we were working there a couple of nights and I think he spoke to his wife that he wanted to purchase the knife from me and uh, we were working in an area where there was no cell phone service uh, I sold the knife to him for $350 uh, later on that night when I left uh, out of that area and got into the area where there was a cellular reception I received uh, the message in my Instagram uh, and his wife contacted me she wanted me 
to sell the knife to her so she would give it to him on Father's Day because Father Day's, Father's Day was approaching. But because there was no cellular uh, service, I could not read her uh, message. Therefore, I just sold the knife. But it would have been cool. Whereas, you know, if I saw the message, I would have told uh, Mr. Wesley that I sold. I just just sold the knife. So I'm sorry, I can't sell it to you. And later on, the knife would be would have been presented to him through his wife so that would have been cool but it didn't work out but he said he said that either way the, the knife ended up in his hands and he was very satisfied so that knife was sold for three hundred fifty dollars since that time I made two more Viper Invader knives and uh, both of them got sold for five hundred fifty dollars each next knife is the Anglian knife uh, way back a uh, British infantry soldier contacted me. He lives in uh, Britain and he asked me to make him a really beefy knife, very thick knife, uh, so he could use it to break glass and stuff. I don't know what he used it for, but he drew up three images uh, that, I, you know, just for me to choose from, and I chose one of them. And I redrew it and I sent it back to him and told him to cut it out of the paper. You know, make sure it fits in his hands because everybody has different size of hands. So he liked it. I made it for him. It was made from 01 tool steel. I shipped it out to him. I got paid. I charged. I charged him $250 plus shipping. Um, he said that at that time he was in the process of buying a house and couldn't pay I more for that knife. So I worked with him and I lowered the price for like I said for $250 and I think I charged him $25 for the shipping so um, I shipped it out to him and I never heard from him again so I don't know if he ever got it I don't know if he's alive hopefully he is so um, that that's the end of that story never heard of him again next knife is CSGO Bowie knife and it was requested by CSGO fans I sold that knife to my fourth cousin for $120. Next knife is a Krauser knife. Uh, I sold that knife for $200 and back then I, I was starting to get um, more popular I guess on Instagram and YouTube and this gentleman contacted me from Kentucky and said that he wanted a knife for me exactly same one so I started working on it um, didn't sleep a lot and I remember finishing it at like 2 in the morning and he he said that I want it done by September and I had only like maybe three weeks to finish that knife while I was working so I I put in a lot of hours um, and I got it done before the deadline and uh, I sent him the, all the information that I where he you know the the billing and everything and he said oh no ship it to me and I'll pay you once I get it and I said no 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 that's not how it works you pay me first and then I ship it to you and he disappeared so I tried to sell that knife couldn't sell it I uh, gave that knife I shipped it to my previous supervisor that I worked with and he was really nice to me and he showed me how to work with metal and metal lathe and stuff so I, as a, you know, courtesy to him, as th saying thank you, I, I shipped it to him for free and he was very excited to receive it as a gift and he was very appreciative. And later on when I went on vacation to Massachusetts, I met up with him and saw that knife again and uh, it was nice to see the knife again. Next knife is Source Knife CSS 1.6. That was a challenging knife for me to make because it would have been easy if I had a milling machine. I would have milled out all the uh, the handle part and the, where the blade goes. But doing it all by hand, it, it it drove me crazy a little bit. I didn't show it in a video, but that was a lot of work removing uh, a lot of steel. And that knife, I sold it for four hundred dollars. And if you want to see the person who bought this knife, you can go check it out on YouTube. He posted a video of unboxing it. Next knife is Tanto Kukri. 
I drew that one up and I've seen a lot of people make uh, kukris but I've never seen anybody make a tanto kukri so um, you know once again I threw it up on a, on a piece of paper and just kept adjusting adjusting until I got the tanto kukri out of it and it took me a long time to make it but I'm very proud of it, it came out really nice and the gentleman that bought it from me I sold it to him for one thousand dollars. I, 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 I paid two hundred fifty dollars for the leather sheath. I had to go uh, drive one hour each direction to drop off the the knife and then pick it up, plus the two hundred fifty dollars. Um, I think with the materials and everything, it came out to be. Uh, 450 to 500 dollars just in materials uh, on top of the driving and everything so the second kukri that I made I sold it for 1600 dollars and with that knife I made more profit next one is CSGO butterfly knife uh, I didn't sell it still have it hangs on my wall it was requested uh, since I made the, the all the CSGO knives or started started to make all the CSGO knives this knife was heavily requested to be made and uh, it's doing pretty good on YouTube channel getting a lot of views on it so didn't sell it still have it uh, the reason why I went with the uh, Damascus steel knife is or the blade is because the next knife that I made, the Tanto knife, I I did not work with a, a Damascus steel before, <clears throat> therefore I wanted to experience on a knife that I wasn't gonna sell. Therefore, when I make made a knife that I was gonna sell, it were it, it came out nice, and I tried to etch it before heat treating it, and it it becomes like a dull dull color nothing pops out but when you heat treat it the steel becomes harder and the, the Damascus steel pops out at you so up to this point you could see this is hardened steel and this is not hardened steel you see how this part right here doesn't have that great detail where this one does so this was experiment knife with the Damascus and that's why I made it and it's it's okay I mean it's not perfect because I used the uh, grinder to to do all the cutouts and as you can see a bunch of little spots where I missed but I'm not selling this one I'm keeping it like I said the next one was a Tanto knife and it was for the gentleman from New York he wanted a custom knife one of a kind and he doesn't want me to make another one like that so he would be only person to have it <clears throat> uh, that knife I sold for seven hundred dollars and the Damascus steel that I bought I bought a um, I think it was maybe two inches wide by I want to say it was about 12 or 11 inches and for that Damascus steel I paid 270 dollars somewhere around there so I used pieces from that steel to make the Tanto knife and then I made a, um, the, the butterfly knife and I practiced on this before I made his knife and that knife came out really nice I know I got a lot of mad people or whatever that I made the sheath out of a kydex for that knife I, I understand that uh, it doesn't go with that kind of style knife but you go with what the customer wants or how much money they have to pay uh, so the customer didn't want to pay more for a more fancier sheath so uh, he went with kydex sheath and he's very happy with it and when I went to uh, New York on vacation I met him again and I held that knife again so it's very pleasing to hold your work you know the knives that you made once again once they leave your hands and it was actually nice to meet him too 
later on he bought another knife from me. Next knife is Serega knife. It is the most popular and it's the most requested knife that I made. Everybody wants their everybody wants to get their hands on it. Uh, I made it for my niece and she wanted to give that knife to her future father-in-law and uh, he was very pleased to receive that present. Since then he got into knife making and at the wedding he came up to me and presented me with uh, a letter opener that is made out of uh, ironwood. Uh, since then I believe I made four more or five more Seregia knives with different style of handles. Um, and yeah like I said it's very popular knife and each of those I sold for $550 plus shipping. The next one is Damascus Kiridashi. I had a couple of pieces left after I made a knife, a Tanto knife and a CSGO butterfly knife. So I had a little piece left and I decided to make a Kiridashi out of it. The person that wanted to buy from me didn't, uh, you know, backed out out of it. So for a long time I couldn't sell it. And eventually I sold it to one of the customers that lives in Los Angeles for $200, but he offered me 250 for it. He gave me a little extra. So from now on I sell those for uh, $250 each. Since then I made uh, three more. Next one is CSGO Karambit. One of the guys that I know, and uh, he wanted the knife, he's an electrician, and he wanted a knife to strip the wire. So I made a knife for him and he said he was going to use it and abuse it. So I, I didn't make it too fancy for him. And I sold that one for 50 or 75 dollars. Next two knives are Vulture Karambit knives. So two people ordered those from me and both people backed out of it. Both of them. So I couldn't sell those and finally the person that bought a uh, Damascus Steel Kiridashi from me he bought one from me and I sold it to him for six hundred dollars. The second knife it's an interesting story. So this person contacted me and said, hey, I want to buy uh, the Karambit from you. I said, okay. So I made it for him. As I was about to be finished with the knife, his fiance contacted me and said that my, my fiance is going to contact you on Instagram and he's going to tell you that he's backing out of the order because he's getting ready for the wedding and he does not have enough money to purchase it but she said I would like to purchase that knife and I would like to present it to him as a gift so I said alright a couple of minutes later I get a message from him and he said hey brother um, I just wanna tell you that I'm sorry but I can't buy the knife from you and uh, uh, I got a wedding coming up and I said it's okay it's okay bro you know wedding is more important you could always get a knife later on so once I finished the knife and I, I start showing on Instagram he contact me and goes man the person that's gonna get that knife is gonna be one lucky person I said oh yes he is and once I finished it I held that knife with me until their wedding I believe it was uh, in August so a couple of days before the wedding, maybe a week before, I shipped it out. Uh, they had uh, they had this I don't know, I think pre-wedding. Everybody got together and uh, they exchanged presents and stuff. So he sent uh, actually she sent it. She sent me a video of uh, her presenting the gift to him. So take a look. Happy lamb and open the present. Right. Keep stalling. <laughs> It's a box. <laughs> it's a banana. That's still the show. <laughs> Start all over. Oh, the water now. <laughs> In your armpit. That's good tape, I think. Here, do you want one knife? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> a plastic knife here. Those plastic knives are actually pretty good. Oh, the knife I gave you? Yeah. Oh, smooth like butter. 
<laughs> Just saying. Just oh, saying. What kind keep, of water? Keep opening it. <laughs> no. I wanna see, I wanna see. I can't see it. I can't see, no one can see. Seriously. <laughs> Babe. What, is what is it? What is it? It's Holy all in What is it? No, I can't see it. Is it a gun? Yeah, is it a gun? <laughs> Honey, cool. do you know how much this was? Yeah, I got it for you. <laughs> I wanna see. Oh. No wonder he wasn't talking to me for a long time. <laughs> he, told you he, he told you he sold it, right? Yeah. Yeah, he sold it to me. Because I asked him about Whoa. it. Whoa. Oh, wow. Wow, that's beautiful. <laughs> I watched like him make, make this it. knife. Wow, really? He he videotapes himself making knives and like like all his knives are like I'm gonna cry. Because like I was gonna buy this knife and I've always wanted a knife from him. And then Brandon said that he he like messaged the guy and said sorry I have a wedding I can't afford for this knife right now. <coughs> like, oh my god. Take off your glasses. I gotta thank him now, and you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Take your shades off. Uh, oh What's it look like in the holster? Don't be a a knife in a holster, Sarah. <laughs> What's a sick holster? Look at that thing. He didn't want to tell me who he sold it to. I was like, whoever's Are getting that. Yeah, I was like, whoever's getting that is a pretty lucky person. He's like. He sure is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a perfect setup. Good oh. job. <laughs> Yay. Oh, I had sugar. <laughs> <laughs> I slowly died for you. I love watching videos like that. Uh, the the first emotion that you see when a person sees their knife for the first time that that's what makes me happy next knife is the CSGO default T knife I sold that one for five hundred fifty dollars this knife was the first knife that I had to put on a on a handguard so it was uh, it was challenging but I, I made it work next knife is a Blake knife I made that knife for my co-worker. He wanted a knife that he could use to strip the wires. He's an electrician and uh, he was very excited to see that knife. Um, he uses it at work, at home, everywhere. And of course he de-energizes the system before he strips the wire so he does not get electrocuted. I know I'll get a lot of comments saying that uh, he's gonna get electrocuted but when you work smart, you don't get electrocuted. Blake knife was sold for $175. It's not a knife, but still, it's one of the things I made in my YouTube channel on my YouTube channel. So I still have it. It's a bottle opener, and I'm not gonna give it away or anything. So it's for me to keep. Next one is Mr. Barnhart's cleaver. I did not make that cleaver, I only restored it or shaped it, altered it, whatever you want to call. Um, it was very controversial video, that, that's why I had to make a second video uh, explaining what I did. I did not make that video because I got my feelings, feelings got hurt by all the comments. I just got tired and tired of uh, replying to those people that this is why I did, this is what I did. And I, I just decided to make a video where I explain everything and that's it. And hopefully those people um, understood what I did with that cleaver. And like I said, I, I didn't make that video for uh, because I, I got really hurt. Uh, so that cleaver, I only charged Mr. Barnhart uh, $180 with the materials and everything. I know I didn't charge a lot but uh, unexpectedly that video had a lot of views and I made up my profit in uh, through the YouTube revenue so I'm pleased. Next two knives are Falk knives. Uh, Mr. Falk contacted me and he wanted for me to make two knives. 
one would be for him and one would be for his uh, friend that got him into hunting and he does very exotic hunting like alligators and stuff so um, so basically he wanted he liked the the handles from the two gut hook knives that I made very very long time ago but he did not need the the gut hook part on it so I redrew those knives and uh, he liked the design and he liked the handles from the gut hook knife so that's what I did I used those those, those kind of handles and that that's what came out those two uh, knives and I named those knives after his last name which is Mr. Falk so both both knives uh, were sold each for uh, $550 plus shipping next knife is the updated version of the Anglian knife the, or the the British infantry soldiers knife and that knife got sold to Mr. Barnhart for $400 so right now Mr. Barnhart has uh, M9 bayonet, he has the, uh, the cleaver and the updated version of the uh, Anglian knife. And the last one is Stingray cleaver. I sold that cleaver for $625. Uh, it, it was made out of 1075 high carbon steel. Um, that is pretty much it guys. Um, I just just finished finished the, the expendable knife and as soon as I finish editing the video it will be out so you'll see it pretty soon so now that you know the prices that I sold my knives for if you notice from the very beginning I did not charge a lot for the knives that I made and the reason there are two reasons why I didn't do it one was because my skill level was not that great and so I kept my prices down and because I have a YouTube channel and because of the ads that are played in my videos I get a little bit of revenue from that and that kinda compensated for keeping my prices low but uh, so let's say the Tanto Kukri, right? I I sold that one for a thousand dollars, the first one, and at that time the rev the the YouTube was doing okay, and so it kind of reimbursed me for the time and everything that I lost. So I think I spent when when I made the second Tanto Kukri, I kind of kept track of the time. And I spent like 30 hours hand sanding it. So before heat treat, I went from 220, 320, 400, 600 grit sandpaper. And then after heat treat, I went uh, 220, 320, 400, 600, 800, 1200, and I went 2500 on, grits on it. So that's why it took me 30 hours to hand sand. Plus the uh, shaping it, uh, grinding it. Uh, it, it has a very difficult, uh, be dif very difficult bevels on it. So that's why I had to go back and um, use the the file jig to line up all the the angles correctly because I'm still learning how to uh, grind on the be on a belt grinder. So I couldn't achieve the the perfect shape of the bevels from the belt grinder and like I said I finished it up on both on both uh, cook crease I finished it she finished off the, the bevels with the file jig um, uh, later on what happened I, I started raising the prices on my knives because uh, at that time YouTube revenue went down to a point where people were watching my videos and they were not seeing any ads in my channel so I had to st by that time my craftsmanship level increased and I had to raise my prices in order to stay afloat in this uh, knife making business um, so basically I had to compensate what I wasn't making on YouTube I was compensating with the uh, knives that I made on the side and what I decided was to stop making a lot of videos on YouTube and started making knives 
for the customers this way I could kind of keep the same ratio of income coming in and then lately YouTube started um, going up again with the ad revenue and um, but I already took a lot of orders so I had I still I'm still uh, have I still have a lot of knives to finish for the customers that are waiting for their knives um, so that's why you haven't seen a lot of videos on YouTube but like I said right now I, I brought up my knives so medium price knife is $550 plus shipping and like the Kiridashis are $250 and uh, the more fancier knives are <clears throat> it just depends on what steel I use and how hard it is to make so the price goes up from there but like I said when you're beginning making knives and selling them nobody knows you so you can't charge a lot plus your your craftsmanship is not at the at, not at that level but once you made a few knives and people start to notice you for your uh, workmanship you could raise up your prices and you, you'll see for how much how, how far you could raise your prices because there will come a time or a level of the prices that you'll see people either back out or some of them will agree to pay that price and some won't so you might back down on your price and find a, a sweet spot so for me right now like I said the Sorega knife is a very um, popular knife and I found that most knife makers sell their fixed blades for around five hundred fifty dollars of course if the uh, I use Damascus steel which is very expensive then I would raise my price by a lot more so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and it opened up your eyes to my prices and um, I don't know what else to say um, I guess I'll see you with the next video which is gonna be this knife so take care guys bye